Today's reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden, untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. It's Palm Sunday. And there is some reason for excitement to be in the air, because if things work out, we will be together next Sunday morning. Uh, you need to call the church office and make a reservation. And uh, I know that's a little strange to talk about making reservations for church, but at this time, when we're still dealing with the, hopefully the ends of the pandemic, that we want to make sure we have a space for everyone and that we are somewhat distanced and uh, we will wear a face, face mask, but we will be together. We will not sing, but the songs will be sung by uh, uh, one of the Becker uh, first, and uh, it's going to be a good day. So call the church office and leave your name and the number of people. And we will look for that service at 1030 on Easter Sunday. Now to get ready for it, today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, uh, it's called that because when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, people put palms in the way along with their coats, other pieces of clothing, and Jesus rode in on a donkey. And he was very, very popular. But there were also storm clouds that were rising. I remember hearing one time that a runner by the name of Gil Dodds, who was working close at breaking the four minute mile. And uh, when he came within a few seconds, the people in the stand stood and they cheered because hopefully he would be able to break that four minute mile. The next week, he ran, stumbled and fell, and the people booed him. Sometimes people in sporting events and at other times can be rather fickle. And those who are cheered may soon be booed. I guess we've seen some of that 
in the uh, kind of tragic loss of the Buckeyes in the tournament. And now there have been several articles about how this one person was even threatened with death because he had the ball stolen from him and missed a foul shot. Yes, yes, people can be fickle. And it was no different in the time that Jesus walked the earth. He went into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, the lowliest of animals. I was reading the other day that um, the way to prevent war is for the arsenal in a country to be so great that everyone else will be afraid to uh, incite war. Rather an interesting concept. I'm tougher than you are. Don't mess with me. Uh, what if Jesus would have taken that stand? Instead of riding in Jerusalem on a donkey, he would have ridden in a chariot with people surrounding him and fighting for him. But he rode on a, a donkey, did not show great strength, but showed humility. And that indeed was what he preached, spoke to us about. That being peaceful and having humility is better for the world than showing strength and being able to do away with people. Do you know that there are quite a few countries in this world where police do not carry guns? And there are very few incidents of police being killed because those who are involved in crime know that when the police come, they will not have weapons to kill them. Kind of a scary thing, isn't it? I was reading about some of those countries and what the results have been. But I got to thinking about uh, some of the uh, people who have been killed by the police, even in Columbus. That if the police had not been carrying guns, those young people, middle-aged, would not have been killed. I'm especially thinking of one that was killed in a garage where the police thought he had a gun and so they killed him. And that has brought a lot of angst to our community. Well, we're not ready to do that. We're a long way from it, but but I was wondering what would have happened if Jesus would have shown strength? What if the disciples would have been armed? And those uh, people who came to bring the cross for Jesus to carry to Golgotha, they would have just shot them all. What would it have meant to the life of Jesus and what it had meant to the world for centuries to come? I grew up in a Mennonite community where uh, they took seriously 
the words of the scriptures that says thou shalt not kill. I mean, they believed that literally the words meant what they said, thou shalt not kill. And I remember sometimes when I would talk to some of those Mennonites and say, well, what would you do if somebody came into your house and threatened with a gun to kill your children? And the person said, I don't know what I would do, but I know I would what I would do if I did what I believed I should do. Is there a possibility that a demonstration of peace and nonviolence could spread throughout our community and world? I, I don't think it would happen in a moment. It would take time. But Jesus seemed to have a philosophy of life where um, he was peaceful in his living. He would not overpower someone. Remember when he was on the cross, he said, I could call 10 legions to get me off the cross. Well, I wonder what would have happened if he would have done that and destroyed the enemies. What would we be saying in our churches and in our Bible studies about how to live in this world? We knew what happened, know what happened to Jesus, a peaceful person. And I'd like to think a little bit about this week leading up to Easter Sunday, the victorious day of Easter Sunday, when things were really heating up when he went into Jerusalem. Though it appeared that he was the winner, they they were cheering him on, but the tables soon were to turn. And he was uh, struggling during that week because he knew he had a good idea of what was going to happen. And he wanted to spend as much time as possible with the disciples. He had brought to them the message of the Creator. And I can imagine the person knew that in all probability they were about to die. And they had a message to share. How desperate they would be to make sure that message was clear and understood by the followers. I think that's why on that night before the crucifixion, on Thursday night as we know it, that he went to that upper room and there the disciples were gathered about the table and he went over again the teachings about how to live in this world in a peaceful and loving way and how easy it would be to miss all of that and to lose that and so as they broke bread together as they drank the cup together Jesus again told them his philosophy of life 
and how this old world could become a better world if they in their lives were willing to follow it. Of course, all of them, it happened to them what had happened to Jesus. They were put to death. But lo and behold, here, 2,000 years later, we gather to worship that one who died on the cross. So they gathered around the table to rehearse again what was important in life. And Jesus went out and because he was struggling with what was about to happen. And he asked the disciples to wait while he went into the garden to pray. And you recall they they were like we are sometimes. They they went to sleep. And Jesus said, Couldn't you have just stayed awake for a while? I think it had not really struck them what they were in the midst of. What really was going on? I think that came to them later when they were willing to die for the beliefs that Jesus had taught them. And of course, the next day when they brought the cross, not only were they going to crucify him, but they made him carry the cross to that place where he would be killed. I remember when I was a child, somebody telling that story and saying that the person who finally came to help Jesus carry the cross was a person dark skinned in color. He among all the others came and said, let me help you carry that cross. And so they put him on the cross, nails through his hands and feet, pierced his side, and he died. And that takes us through this week. Now we all know how that story continued on. For three days later, he, after being put in the tomb, they found the tomb empty. That he had risen from the dead, meaning that no matter how life, bad life gets, there can be hope and possibilities that we never ever thought of. I think maybe that's one of the reasons that churches often are filled on Easter Sunday. Probably more people come to worship on that Sunday than any other time. I think it's because deep inside of us, there is hope. Hope that in the midst of life that does not always work out well for us. Life that brings disappointments and heartache. That in the midst of that, we as human beings have a hope that things are going to get better. And there are possibilities greater than we could ever imagine. 
So this is Holy Week. And though we cannot be together to celebrate this week, we can in our minds and our hearts remember the struggle that Jesus went through. Remember the the possibilities that Jesus lays at our doorstep and are there for our accepting them and believing them. So don't miss this week because Easter Sunday does not have the meaning that it could have if we forget about the struggle that Jesus went through the turmoil that came to his life. Seeing his mother at the foot of the cross, weeping because her child was dying. But then came hope. And again, I think that deep within us as human beings, there's some little voice that says to us, keep going. There are possibilities for you beyond anything that you can imagine. So, Will you remember that? And be prepared that we be together next Sunday morning. Let us pray. Oh God, your bountiful love is not forgotten. Though sometimes we go for long periods of time and it does slip from our mind, but not for long, because we know that what you brought into this world, we desperately need. So we prepare for next Sunday when there was a great time of healing and new life in the lives of the disciples and all the followers of Jesus and the whole world. Amen.